Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code 1FREEPP for a free single card today. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at race number two at Belmont at the Big A on Sunday. It's the grade two Bell Dame. These are Phillies and Mares going a mile and an eighth. Before we take a look at the field, remember the deal for DRF TV viewers 10% off all DRF past performances. The coupon code is DRFTV10. Shop now by accessing the QR code on your screen. Here's the field for the Bell Dame, and it could be a potential prep for the Breeders' Cup distaff for the one to five morning line favorite, Raging Sea, who ran down the divisional leader Idiomatic in the personal ensign last time out. And Mike, if you're handicapping this race by class and speed figures, it's really a one horse race, isn't it? Yeah, that's why she's she's one to five on the morning line. I mean, for whatever reason, I don't I don't I don't know what that reason is, Dan, but nobody showed up in this race. Raging C, I think, will turn up in the Breeders' Cup after this, and we'll see how she does there. It's just really, really hard to make a case for anybody to beat her here unless something goes terribly wrong. Well, let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. We know Raging C is a closer. Uh, the three Liban figures to make the lead in a situation that could favor front runners, although the six Majestic Creed has speed. And Chad Brown also entered the stretch out sprinter, the one signal from Noise, who could be in there to ensure at least a fair pace. I didn't think they were going to go fast in here. Um, I also didn't think that that was, you know, any kind of an issue for Raging C. Dan, I mean, no, all right, she's got the, the, the best late pace rating, which is true. Um, she won the Shuvi two back by, you know, a very slow pace, sitting in the pocket, winning easily. She won the double dog dare off the layoff this year, sitting up close in the pocket behind a slow pace and winning very easily. I was really hoping that the one signal from noise would turn out to be a lot better in 2024. I thought that she showed some flashes last year, Mike. Her one and only race without Lasix was the Lady Secret. And I'm still trying to figure out exactly what sort of ride that was. They went 25 to the quarter. She broke from the rail and made the lead. They wrangled her behind the only horse she had to beat, Shotgun Hottie. And guess what? She was second best to that horse. Yeah, that wasn't a great ride. Um, unfortunately for Signal from Noise, she just hasn't gone forward since then, Dan. I mean, she did start out with a little bit of potential. And for whatever reason, she's never delivered on it. Her recent form, not great. I did, I thought she actually ran pretty well when Chad cut her back to seven furlongs, two back. Didn't get a great trip in there. I thought she ran okay in that race. Um, I just don't, I don't know when she's finally going to break through, if she's ever going to break through. And then the more you look at her, I know she's by Arrogate, but when you look at her pedigree, man, She's bred to be better going shorter. Tried to rally in a race where they ran one, two around the track, but you sure wanted to see her perhaps run a little bit better. I do think she has some ability. The number two in this race is Batu Kada, one of several in here for Safi Joseph. This horse ran seventh last time out in the Ontario Matron over a synthetic track. And that was a closer's race that you would have thought would have played to her style. Now, when she ran without Lasix three back in the powder break on synthetic, she couldn't have won that race any easier. She's done some good things on dirt. It's obviously a big hike in class. Yeah, it just hasn't really um, upped her game. They ran on a couple of grade threes recently, and they did that off of two really good races. I like that she did it with different styles too, Dan. She won the dirt race, you know, right up on the pace. She won the she won the powder break from well off of a really fast pace. So she seems versatile, but she didn't handle the class rise recently. And this race is certainly uh, even tougher than either of those last two. So we'll see what she does here. I do think she has the right running style. Safi, you can look him up. Each of his two starters in here are both synthetic to dirt. He's got pretty good numbers with horses like that. And Lebon is an excuse, I think, for that Ontario matron. Again, that just race went to closers. And Lebon's a speed horse who wasn't able to make the lead, chased a very fast pace, and all things considered, really didn't tire that badly. Her race before that, she was simply overmatched at a distance that could be a little bit far for her in the Beverly D on turf. She's won on dirt in the past and she's a speed yeah. horse getting blinkers and i read there's a chance she makes the lead and backs it down yeah i thought for that reason i thought that she was at least mildly interesting to to try to get in there uh maybe in the exact i realized that the stakes win that she does have on her card came on the turf um but i'm not you know maybe and listen maybe she just did really improve with the surface switch but maybe she's just improving as a late four-year-old she hasn't been on dirt in almost six months. And um, we already know that she can handle dirt, Dan. She's a three-time winner on the surface. We were hoping and expecting Raging Sea to have a nice four-year-old campaign because she showed a lot of promise at three. And it's nice that she's been able to build on last year's successes. Let's watch her most recent start. It's her third graded stakes uh, win of the year. Uh, she certainly took advantage of a hot pace. Idiomatic dueled with her uncoupled stablemate, Randomized. Raging C's uncoupled stablemate. You can see Randomized faltering near the back of the pack. Idiomatic is still staying on. She ran the best race, 
Raging Sea got the best setup. Yeah, exactly. She took advantage of a really good setup here. Um, and listen, to her credit, um, when the setup was there for her, she ran and she got the job done. And now she's a grade one winner. Um, and it's totally fair to look at that race and say, well, she's not really that good. I mean, the race sort of fell into her lap and she couldn't help but win. And that's fine. Um, but if she runs her Shuvi here, she's going to win. If she runs her Double Dog Dare here, she's going to win. Even if she runs her Ogden Fifth, where she was fourth and she ran yeah. okay in that race. She runs that race, she's going to win here. From a figure standpoint, she towers over this field. Frosty O'Toole, I thought, had a little bit of an excuse in the Molly Pitcher against Idiomatic two starts back. A, she was running against Idiomatic, and Sullivan Angel was pretty darn good as well. But also, she didn't break very well, and she must have been five path all the way on the back stretch through the turn. Now, I've expected more from her in the Obeya last time out at Delaware. Maybe that pace just wasn't fast enough for her. Yeah, I was disappointed with her last race, too. Not that I necessarily expected her to win there, but I, I thought she maybe would show something, and she really did. And I'm with you on the Molly Pitcher. You know, listen, she's just one of those horses, another one who sort of never really panned out. I think early on, they felt like maybe they had something on their hands. She won, I think, the first two dirt races of her career. They sent her to Pletcher. They ran her in some graded stakes races. It didn't work out, and it's not like she's gotten that much better since then. Majestic Creed won her last race at Parks, this race, uh, for a $40,000 claiming option by Open Open Legs, and she ran hard from start to finish. She went to the lead. She opened up an uncontested lead, but she went quick in doing so, and she put the boots to this field, and she was claimed out of this race by Jamie Ness, who has a reputation for moving horses up off the claim. Yeah, that's you know one of the things to sort of latch on to here. If you wanted to look for somebody to play against a very heavy favorite in here, that's one of the things that you can hold on to here. I suspect off the claim that they'll go right back to using her speed in this race. She is already a minor stakes winner anyway, um, around two turns, uh, going a mile. So, you know, we'll see what happens. She's never run a race that's going to beat the favorite in here, but uh, maybe Ness will improve her. Well, let's take a look at our top picks for the grade two building. Raging Sea is obviously the horse to beat. If you want to try to beat her, maybe it's the other Chad signal from Noise, who I've always hoped would turn out to be okay, but just has fallen short of her potential thus far. She would need to be 20 to one for me to better. She's not going to be 20 to one. Thus, I watch Raging Sea. And if Raging Sea wins, maybe another rematch with Idiomatic. Yeah. And we also get Thorpedo Anna. Yeah, exactly. I mean, listen, she's a really nice horse. We'll see what she does here. I mean, she's almost, it's kind of, you hate to concede a race to a horse who's a heavy favorite, but it's almost like she's just supposed to win here and move on. Four, three, two, one for Mike. Four is the horse to beat. We'll see what signal from noise can do. Maybe at uh, best she can come up and complete the exotics in the grade two Bell Dame. Best of luck. Hey, friends, you look like you're in need of a winner. If you enjoyed the great content right here, just click and subscribe right here and enjoy the great DRF.com race of the days, the phenomenal stakes previews, and so much more. Many of that content featuring me and my exceptional selections. Trust me, you won't regret it.